Daily Tata family, we're still discussing the legacy of mines today on the show. And when we talk about the legacy of mines, we are talking about basically what have the mining companies left us, you know, after they have mined, after they have profited, after making billions from the different minerals that they find in Africa and South Africa. And I know that, Pramesh, you are one of the people that has had a long relationship with a mine. And what do you think about the legacy of mines in South Africa? The mines, as you see around, have left us without a rehabilitated land. Mm. Uh, but with acid mine drainage, mm. uh, the land cannot be used for anything else, mm. but it's left like this. Mm. So uh, we feel that is this is important for mining affected communities to able to reclaim the land mm. and demand the mineral sata there because they are the rightful owners mm. of the land. Some of the guys we have within our era have tried to get into artisanal mining, but then they are always being victimized by policemen, they are always being criminalized by uh, our law, South African law. Our constitution usually says that uh, all who live in South Africa are supposed to be benefiting from the minerals of the country. Can you just please explain to us what's going on in this plate here? Okay. Here at the top of this uh, black soil, there's small portions of uh, yellow, yellow particles, mm. which is the gold which has been uh, discovered from the process which was done. After being purified from here, mm. they burn it and mix it with uh, mercury, which would make it uh, solid. Then from there, they're gonna take it and burn it again so that they remove the mercury out of the mm. the gold. And the gold will stay as pure as, as its natural form. How muso ugali tu sa mosho munga di license sa o process a kauta e na igat tu sa ko balun. E gaba right ne kwa gara support kena le netel bono balenga sa epimba tuva kamu gaba ethavelan tu kwa ethavelan netel ho. Ramesh, when mining leave, they don't just leave, you know, um, the bad legacy of broken families, the bad legacy of people that are living in poverty. They also take or strip down some of their structures. And this is one of the examples that you showed me. Can you take me uh, behind the story of this particular place? Okay, this was called uh, Flachfontein Mine, mm -hmm. where the workers used to stay here after work. But what happened is when the Flachfontein Mine closed down, Mm -hmm. They are not just destroy the place, but they chased away the workers to go say, go and look for places. And these people, and most of them are not from around, they're from mm -hmm. far away. That proves beyond any reasonable doubt that the mines don't care about the people. Mm -hmm. They were here to loot and leave those people because it doesn't make sense. Why they didn't leave this building to say thanks to these people? You have made us a uh, you know, lot of money and now we're giving you to this building and take care of this building. I mean, we had some uh, people who tried to build a shack here and it sinked down. And that's when they start to know. Fortunately, those people didn't just die, but they're now aware of this place that is, this place is dangerous. So, Tepola Gula Lingo Siwele Kona Uri Shatim Shala, the five year old boy, who she he felt in last year, Feb, I can't remember yeah, the remember. actual day. Yeah, I remember there was a time when yeah. there was yeah. scurrying around and trying to rescue the child. You know what's my worry? It's the fact that where we are standing right now, you say this kid um, that came here and fell into the hole lived around the community behind us. I know that people can't see, but there's actually a squatter camp where people actually live on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and this hole where I'm standing right now, guys, you won't believe it. This is incredibly deep. I, I wish I can find a rock here. This is plus, uh, it's over two kilometers Over two down. kilometers down. So what I'm gonna try and do is that, because this ground falls if you get too close, here, here's the stone, we follow its movement. This shaft is not the only actually sinkable place here. That this whole area potentially could at some point fall into oh, yeah. a, hole, a, a hole like this. Yeah. One of the biggest legacies that we have currently of mining is squatter camps. And if you can see behind me here, these you know, are houses that are made from, from planks, from plastics from sticks and anything that these people here can find, you know, just to try and have shelter and make a living and raise their kids, as you can see them walking by. But at the end of the day, these are the people that are left here because mining companies didn't pay them enough to go back home, because mining companies didn't pay them enough to re-establish their lives after they have profited. And also, if you look at from a disease point of view, across there, it's something that is called a mine dump. Now, this mountain comes from all the dust when, when the, the mining companies were extracting gold uh, 
uh, beneath you know this particular land and that's what's left the mine dump that can possibly cause asthma that can possibly cause bronchitis and all other you know chest related diseases so this is exactly what we are ex what we are exploring today daily teta to say that from a political point of view how did mining affect us you know from an economical point of view how did mining affect us and from the african family because mine took our fathers and our mothers had to become the the, the fathers and also the breadwinners in the families how did it impact the african family do we have a good story to tell about the presence of mine in Africa and South Africa.